This is section 45 of Mark Twain's Speeches. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Introducing Nye and Riley by Mark Twain. Read by John Greenman. James Whitcomb Riley and Edgar Wilson Nye, Bill Nye, were to give readings in the Tremont Temple, Boston, November 1888. Mr. Clemens was induced to introduce Messrs. Riley and Nye. His appearance on the platform was a surprise to the audience, and when they recognized him there was a tremendous demonstration. "'I am very glad indeed to introduce these young people to you, and at the same time get acquainted with them myself. I have seen them more than once for a moment, but have not had the privilege of knowing them personally as intimately as I wanted to. I saw them first a great many years ago, when Mr. Barnum had them, and they were just fresh from Siam. The ligature was their best hold then. The literature became their best hold later, when one of them committed an indiscretion, and they had to cut the old bond to accommodate the sheriff. In that old former time, this one was Chang, that one was Ang. The sympathy existing between the two was most extraordinary. It was so fine, so strong, so subtle, that what the one ate, the other digested. When one slept, the other snored. If one sold a thing, the other scooped the usufruct. This independent and yet dependent action was observable in all the details of their daily life. I mean this quaint and arbitrary distribution of originating cause and resulting effect between the two, between, I may say, this dynamo and the other, always motor, or, in other words, that the one was always the creating force, the other always the utilizing force. No. No, for while it is true that within certain well-defined zones of activity the one was always dynamo and the other always motor, within certain other well-defined zones these positions became exactly reversed. For instance, in moral matters Mr. Chang Riley was always dynamo, Mr. Eng Nye was always motor. For while Mr. Chang Riley had a high, in fact an abnormally high and fine moral sense, he had no machinery to work it with, whereas Mr. Eng Nye, who hadn't any moral sense at all, and hasn't yet, was equipped with all the necessary plant for putting a noble deed through, if he could only get the inspiration on reasonable turns outside. In intellectual matters, on the other hand, Mr. Eng Nye was always dynamo, Mr. Chang Riley was always motor. Mr. Eng Nye had a stately intellect, but couldn't make it go. Mr. Chang Riley hadn't, but could. That is to say that while Mr. Chang Riley couldn't think things himself, he had a marvelous natural grace in setting them down and weaving them together when his pal furnished the raw material. Thus, working together, they made a strong team. Laboring together, they could do miracles. But break the circuit, and both were impotent. It has remained so to this day. They must travel together, hoe and plant and plow and reap and sell their public together, or there's no result. I have made this explanation, this analysis, this vivisection, so to speak, in order that you may enjoy these delightful adventurers understandingly. When Mr. Eng Nye's deep and broad and limpid philosophies flow by in front of you, refreshing all the regions round about with their gracious floods, you will remember that it isn't his water, it's the other man's, and he is only working the pump. And when Mr. Chang Riley enchants your ear and soothes your spirit 
and touches your heart with the sweet and genuine music of his poetry as sweet and as genuine as any that his friends the birds and the bees make about his other friends the woods and the flowers you will remember while placing justice where justice is due that it isn't his music but the other man's he is only turning the crank i beseech for these visitors a fair field a single-minded one-eyed umpire and a score bulletin barren of goose eggs if they earn it and i judge they will and hope they will mr james whitcomb chang riley will now go to the bat end of introducing nye and riley by mark twain read by john greenman